This week's movie, Who Am I? After a series of bizarre occurrences, my fellow students and I begin to suspect the teachers of our local high school are not what they seem to be. Stay tuned to find out. You're listening to the Banana Real Movie Podcast, episode 53. Warning, this show contains spoilers and coarse language, so you've been forewarned. Hey, we're the Theatre Grillers. My name is Carlos. I'm Heath. And I'm Dan. And each and every fortnight we get together and discuss a movie that we've seen. And this week it is The Fundamentals of Caring. But before we go into that, you can always reach us via email, which is at... Gmail? At Gmail. Yeah, of Just course. Gmail. No. Good uh, old at um, gmail.com. That joke's never going to get old. No. That will not to us anyway. No. Um, yeah, so if you want to get to us, it's uh, theatergrillers at gmail.com, spelt the UK English way for theatre. Mm-hmm. Uh, otherwise, you can just go to our website, theatergrillers.com, and uh, it's spelt either way. It will take you there and just follow us on the various social medias that you can find posted there. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Are we on Snapchat yet? No. Just know what all the cool kids are doing these days. Oh, please. No. Like Snapchat, no, chatting, I'm, dick I'm, I'm getting too old for this shit. I was going to say, unfortunately, <laughs> I don't know how to snap or chat. Uh, that's right. Just take a picture of your penis. I've heard that sort That's of what I heard that happens. Uh, it's like I go on there. It's like, hey, where the theater grill is. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Which only lasts, what, seven seconds at the most? It's all right, guys. Hopefully. It, it and it's just forever on a server. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, you're fired. Anyway. <laughs> So as we said before, we are looking at The Fundamentals of Caring, starring Paul Rudd. Uh, Selena Gomez. Selena Gomez. And yeah. what's the kid's name? Craig, Craig Roberts. Roberts. Craig Roberts. So, uh, and directed by uh, Rob Burnett. Yes. So, and written by him too. And written by him as well. Hmm. So this movie, I don't know about you guys, but this movie, straight off the bat, I loved it 100%. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I was actually mentioning before, uh, first time in a long time where I had constant little laugh out loud moments. Yeah, mm, me too. Yeah, yeah. You know, pretty much from the get go, I'm like, ah, there we go. Like nice little quick getting you just getting you in the mood jokes. Yeah, okay. And they were and, consistent. It was good. And for me, it was the moment that Craig Roberts appears. Is it Craig Roberts? Did I get that right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm. So the moment the young boy, which is Craig Roberts, who's in the wheelchair, aka Trevor. Yeah. So Trevor. The moment he appears on screen is the moment I start laughing. Uh-huh. It's it's the British humour that comes out, yeah. the wit and delivery that uh, that only Brits can really do. Yeah, true. Um, when his presence appears on screen, that's when you actually see it. And I think that as well, like that little moment set the tone for the movie as well. And I, when I say that is because up until that point, like, you know, it had that classic, you know, indie film kind of vibe to it where... Uh, you know, you think, okay, what's going to happen? Where's the, you know, you've obviously with Paul Rudd, you're thinking it's going to be some form of comedy, so you're going to have have a bit of a laughing laugh moment. Mm-hmm. But it's when, you know, Trevor rolls in mm. to the living room, <laughs> having his little moment, faking, well, a faking it, you know, faking his moment, yeah. and then saying, you know, and they have that whole thing where he, you know, Paul Rudd's going, "Is it my ass to shave? Is this what's going on?" Yeah, yeah. And then he goes, "Seriously, he thinks that you know, he <laughs> thinks retards are uh, set off by uh, by yeah. after shave. Like, what's he thinking?" Yeah. And I thought that's that's that from right there is exactly that interview process actually in yeah. its entirety is exactly what the tone for this film was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Now, previously you were mentioning how you felt that the movie. Uh, it took a little while to get to to some kind of momentum. So yeah, when I was talking a bit before about momentum, I, I always when I, the way I judge a movie, especially a Netflix film, which this was, it was made direct for Netflix. Yep. It's by how much I pick up my phone. Like if the, how's the story progressing? If I pick up my phone just to check something or whatever, I kind of feel like that's where the story has slowed down a little bit. Yeah, okay. Because that's something I generally don't do in a theater. I just don't do that kind of thing when I'm at a cinema or seeing a movie. I won't, wouldn't do that. But if, if I'm on my couch watching a film, you know, did I pick up my phone? And there were a couple of moments, especially on the road trip, where mm-hmm. I felt, okay, it's starting to lose its momentum a little bit. Okay. Like as yeah. the, as the story was progressing, um, I've got little uh, like parts that will come up to in the road trip that I do want to mention. I won't mention them right now, but yeah, there was just parts where I thought it was just a little slow. Saying that though, still I enjoyed the movie. Like it's still a good movie. Right. For me, I, I'm the complete opposite. I felt that from the very beginning, this movie laid out to the viewer exactly what was happening straight from beginning. So. 
the first moment we see Paul Rudd in training to be a carer and they're explaining the mundane rules of what it means to be a carer at this current... Aloha. Yeah. yeah. The, yeah. Their, their rule set, like, give just enough, not too much, don't excel, don't get to know them, don't do anything. And from that moment, you have this idea, this image that that's what it's meant to be. Don't, don't, you know, you're, you're only there to provide the bare, bare necessities and then go home. Yeah. And from that moment, you you understand, okay, he's doing this for something. You don't quite understand. And straight away, you get straight to the point. And the moment once you meet Trevor, you mm. you start to understand that, that, okay, well, we're going somewhere already straight away by just his response in the interview that it's like, I might be doing this for my own reasons, but you know what? I don't have to take your fucking shit. Mm. Literally, actually. And so his response was actually quite funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. And and in a very smart way for an interview. Yeah, exactly. And I, like I said, I did. I love that entire interview process, especially with that part where he goes, you know, when you had to, if you have to wipe my ass or something like that, how will you do it? And he just goes, well, I'll wipe your ass until there's no shit left on it. Yeah. <laughs> the end. But like, like, what, what, it was a perfect response. But yeah, for, for what my my point essentially is that from the very beginning, it doesn't really stop. I, I, I found that the flow was consistent all the way through i think probably the only time that if if there was a section to criticize which even so i don't think it is is the montage of the road trip where where you're seeing them go to the toilet yeah 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 and the only reason that is there is to give the nice climactic ending yeah, oh, that yeah. happens in the film. Exactly. Yeah. Which we'll explain at a later point. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Okay, but yeah, I'll, I'll look, I'll bring up as well just like little parts as we get into it of where I felt slow, uh, it slowed down. But like I said, it didn't actually affect the story in a manner that I went, oh, this is awful and I'm never going to, you know, watch this movie. Mm-hmm. It was more, okay, like there were points in the road trip and like I said, we'll, we'll bring it up where I kind of felt like, oh, do you need to do that? You may as well just bring them up now. Yeah. Oh, you, like no, peaches? No point tiptoeing around them. Yep. Yeah. Peaches? Yeah. I kind of felt like, why did we need peaches? For the payoff at the end when uh, she gives birth. But that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of still felt like you couldn't have done that in another way. I don't know. I mean, granted, I know that they were trying but, their yeah, best Yeah, but not the, to I do... mean, there's wider implications there as well. It's the idea that they become a, a traveling caravan, you know, picking up people all over the place. Like, it, it all fits into the story. I yeah. don't think it's an unnecessary... Scary. I know. Character. I just kind of felt like it's. It, it was... Yeah, she was unnecessary to have in it. At first, I thought the same. But then you, re- you quickly realize that... Um, I mean, Paul Rudd's character, the reason he, he's gone into caretaking is because of the death of his son. Yeah. And initially you – one thing I'll say about this movie is the stereotypes are there but in a way that you're not suspecting. What do you you mean? Because there are general stereotypes, right? So um, a carer meets an ailed person. They, They bond. They both grow. They both heal each other. And then along the way one helps the other in a social environment. So, for example, Trevor has never left his house Mm. and this road trip is for him to experience the world. Yeah. In doing so... So it's an archetype, not a stereotype. Yes, sorry. Yeah. 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 Um, And then in doing so, boy meets girl and father figure helps to try and sort of get him out of his shell. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And in that, throughout the whole movie, you also have this underlying suspicion that the Trevor is going to die. Yeah. Yeah. And what I love uh, out of this is that the, the, the clear moments where you think stereotypically it's something's wrong going to happen. It doesn't happen. And it yeah, yeah. does. Mm-hmm. That's what I love about this movie. Yeah. Cool. Is that it dangles it over your head like a carrot on a stick, yeah. but it never pays off in that way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's what I loved. Mm-hmm. No, fair enough. Fair enough. And I, I don't know. Look, and I do understand as well, like why that's why she was in there as well. To so okay, when you've got that moment, yeah, you don't think it's that. Like so, you think it's that, and then it ends up not being. Yeah. Well, again, yeah, it works back into that. Exactly. Trope. But I don't know. I still kind of th- feel like it didn't really need to happen. I don't really understand it was, what it you was mean. More, it was yeah. more. Mean, for- that's like saying you didn't need the Death Star trench run in Star Wars. No, it's like, you didn't need. Well, as in, I, I don't know. Like, like it would have like, been a full movie without the Death Star trench. It's like, but that's the way it was written. Yeah, true. You know, I don't know, but that's why where I felt like it slowed down. Yeah. Okay. Potentially, but 
it plays it played two points in particular. One was to have Paul open up about being a father. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, or maybe more than two ways, but it helps with him opening up about being a father in the first place because all we know is he was a father and the only conversation is him telling Trevor to go fuck himself. Yeah. So from another angle and perspective, we eventually learn what happens to his son. Yeah. But he opens up and, you know, clearly s- says everything that he felt about being a father, which is whatever anyone says about being a parent is true. Like yep. he shows that in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. By meeting Peaches and having a discussion with her, and later later on when she does give birth, that helps him heal for losing his son. Mm. That life can go on and it has to go on, and that's the way I see it. Like yeah. he's at first he's trying to run away. The fact that he doesn't want a divorce, he's just trying to run away mm. from everything, and he's only taking a job that pays fuck all, as Trevor points it out to him couple of times. $9 an hour to wipe my ass. Yeah. yeah. The only reason he's doing it is to run away because he feels like he's got nothing left to do. Yeah. Or and and, and he probably because he feels so responsible for the death of his son that he has to repay it somehow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, like, for me, that that is what happens. Like, him helping with the birth is just a way of him healing. Yeah, fair enough. Mm. But that's it. Aside from that, you're probably right. There probably is no other reason for Peaches to be there. Yeah. It's just maybe another woman on the trip. Yeah. And well, that's and that's kind of like I think what it felt like she was up until that point. Yeah. It was like, okay, she's just there. Like, you know, with the Selena, uh, Selena Gomez's character, Dot, she kind of, she exactly like you said, she was that, um, you know, the female, uh, like, uh, sorry, the the female lead, but also what I would mean by that is, you know, someone for the, Trevor to like lust for. Mm. and to kind of not fulfill those, you know, the things that he couldn't fulfill, like, you know, the be, like just going on a date, but also having that connection with someone that's closer to his age. Well, probably also to, I, I think, uh, probably also to keep the two of them in check. Yeah. Because they, they are both, I mean, it, it's obvious when they have their argument, which happens in ma- majority of films, the two main characters eventually have their argument that separates them. It's almost like a romantic comedy that doesn't isn't about romance. Isn't about the romance between a boy and a girl. Or is it? You know what I mean? Like yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's more of a bromance. Yeah. But mm. um so the the fight happens and they separate and she's the one that pulls them in line. It's like, no, we're fucking doing this. You know, I had no interest in seeing the bottomless pit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or mm. the biggest the biggest hole in the world. Like I had no interest in seeing it, but because of you two fuckers, yeah. I now want to see it. Oh, okay. So I wouldn't really consider that point their argument. I thought you were talking about the argument they had at the beginning when he tells them to uh go fuck, fuck off. Yeah, go no, fuck no, no, no. Right. See, at that point See, I, I would have described that more as their their point of disillusionment where they they've lost all sort of purpose in the journey. Well, that's as well because this journey changed for Trevor. Yeah. Like, you know, he came to that point where he's like, yeah, you know what, while I'm doing this, I'm going to go see my father. Yeah. Like, he's a strange father who then turns out just to be an absolute cock. Yeah. Have you got anything to add, Dan? Um, no, not particularly. Um, the only thing I'd say about sort of the pacing is I felt like uh, right when it started to hit its stride, it sort of got to the end. So. Right. It, I, I don't know. I mean, I say it could have been uh, there could have been another half an hour of the movie, but I mean, obviously, it's a movie. You know, that's it's uh, that's arguing semantics. But I felt like just as you were sort of getting into it, yeah, it was it it finished. Right. So I think yeah, that's the only criticism I, I'd say as far as the the pacing or the the relative slowness of some some scenes. But yeah. See, for me, I just felt like this movie. Pardon me. See, for me, I just felt like this movie flowed from beginning to end. It did, it oh, didn't, absolutely, yeah. It no, did no, not have any any perfect, quirks yeah. or anything like that, that 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 made you really think, okay, was that necessary? Yeah. And I I don't know. It just it's rare for me to see sit down and see a movie these days yeah. and not have an issue with it in some way, shape, or form. Mm-hmm. This movie just hit me right where I needed it the most at the right time, mm-hmm. and. I don't know, maybe in a year's time if I'd seen this movie then rather than now, maybe my view on it might be different. If I saw it earlier, maybe my view would be different. But it just, I don't know, it just hit me right at the the right moment to watch it. Mm -hmm. 
And for me, I, I really didn't find a fault with this movie. Yeah, no, it was hard to you know have any issues with it. Um, yeah, like just the fact that like we were saying the laugh out loudness of it. Like yeah. it's not often I'll go see a comedy and actually physically laugh, but I got a few weird looks on the train watching it today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. And I, you know what? And I think that's also a really good point of why this is a good movie. Like and this is a good comedy. Yeah. Because exactly, it actually made you laugh. Yeah. Like, it, you know, not just being in a crowded theatre. So like, maybe that's the uniqueness of it. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily define a comedy. And I think as well, it also, well, yeah, that's the uniqueness of it because also the things that it makes you laugh at. Yeah. I mean, you've got the um, the choking points. Yeah, yeah. So where Trevor, like, like, you think, oh, my God, you know, the first time it happens, it's like, oh, he was joking. That's fantastic. So he fakes the choke and um, Ben Benjamin goes into, you know, what am I going to do? And then he laughs at him and realizes a joke. Yeah. And then when he's got the, you know, have a James. But- <laughs> that was, that was a <laughs> what, what I, what I thought, have a James. What I thought was That's great. That's what you call it in Britain, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what I thought was great was that every time he had a choking fit, yeah. He was upping the ante. Oh, yeah. yeah. And making it more and more believable to the point where I thought sooner or later it's going to be a case of boy who cried wolf. Well, that's what I thought was happening in the car. Like after he bites the Slim Jim and he starts doing it to the point where he's like, shit, and he, you know, right, fucking yeah. fully pulls over, panic mode, mm. and then he just starts laughing at him. It's just, uh, And you're like, you fucker. At that point, I'm like, are you serious? Like are you going to toy with it that much? Like, mm. fuck, man. And I'm glad. I'm just so glad that they didn't actually play it through where they thought they were joking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he ends up choking to death, like, mm-hmm. honestly. The, how good was Paul Rudd, uh, Ben's uh, comeback off for him? Oh, with the pills? With the pills and the, uh, right. and the aspirator? Yeah. 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 Oh, man, because then you see the panic in Trevor's face and you're like, holy shit, you yeah. know, oh, this is fucked. And then he's like, oh, well, luckily I've got him. Yeah. And you're like, oh, fuck you. That's so good. <laughs> yeah. You knew it was coming. You knew exactly that he was playing. Yeah. Because there is no way in hell after what happened to his son and how much his mother, Trevor's mum, is so frantic about the whole trip in the first place. There is no way in hell he's going to be so complacent. Yeah, no, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. Oh, look, you do know that, but it's kind of like, oh, shit, if it happened, fuck. <laughs> like, yeah, accidents could happen, but there's just no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After, ev- after all the care... Forgive the pun, but after all the care that he does, uh, Paul Rudd's character does in this movie, there's no way, no way. I just did not feel it. Yeah. And that, that's one thing I wanted to get to is that one thing I find with this movie is that the characters are kind of genuine. Yep. Yeah. Um, maybe except for Selena Gomez's character. She's- I think that's just her face. You think that's just her face? <laughs> Basically. Uh, you, look, you, look, you look disingenuous. That's yeah. just my face. Yeah, that's the spirit. <laughs> I, I, found, I found her to be the very, very, uh, a character that we've seen before in other sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. movies like this. Mm-hmm. Uh, but aside from that, like, I found, especially the relationship between Paul Rudd and um, Craig is, yeah. is very genuine. Like, I don't know. I, I can't explain it any other way. Mm. Look, and that's that's look, that's one a testament to the performances, um, which I thought, you know, they've were quite good. Like mm. the performance is really good. Um, you know, especially I have to say Craig uh Craig Roberts playing someone with muscular dystrophy. Mm. Uh I've uh, <clears throat> I've uh, I know of someone who's had who had muscular dystrophy and what it does to the body is it's terrible. Like it's an absolutely awful, awful degenerative disease. Mm-hmm. But the way that he actually played it was exactly like someone with muscular dystrophy. Like mm-hmm. as in the way that his body had to move, yep. the way that he had his hand in a particular way, because you, some like sometimes it hits the hands, you can't actually move no, your hands yeah. Yeah. and whatnot. Um, the way that his entire weight, like not being able to support himself, mm-hmm. like he put his entire body into it. Mm. He played that role really freaking well. And so I think that's where it it comes in, where you actually see it as being a genuine relationship in genuine circumstances. Yeah. So that's where it comes across. Fair enough. There you go. I think it's time for a break. Yeah. Okay. While we're on the subject of characters... I have to, uh, like, you know, aside from, obviously, we had Trevor, uh, we have Ben, who we've talked a little bit about, like I said, played it great, and I thought their characters, we were saying how their relationship is quite genuine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What do we think of some of the auxiliary characters, though? So Dot, Peaches, um, 
I'm going to call her by her act- the actress's name, Jennifer, and it's not, it's the mum. Um, Elsa, Elsie, Elsa, 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 Elsa thank you. It's like, I know, I know the actress's name. I just can't remember the character's name. Elsa. That's right. Um, what do we think of these characters? Uh, I found, I found the mother, yep. Elsa. I found her to be a little bit, for someone who is like overly worried about her son, about being with this particular ailment. Yep. I found her very, very laxed. Okay. Because well, the only reason I say that is, is all right. You've hired someone new to look after your son who needs a lot of care and a lot of look looking after, right? Mm-hmm. So you have this person come in who has no idea, has never done a caring job before in his life. Yep. And then you leave your son with him for an entire day. Yeah. Without instructions to read over beforehand. A crash course in five minutes is not instructions. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. That's, that's the only thing. I, th- I, found, I found her lack of, of um, stress. Okay. See, a I'd- little disturbing. Aside from that, I thought she was fine. Incidentally, there might have been a jumping continuity there because I don't think he actually went to uh, – started working for her the same day. But anyway, no, it's, I thought it's, it's no, no, no. She, he, he went back the next day or whatever. Yeah, yeah. but I thought she That's did. Anyway. But I thought she showed him everything that he needs. Because no. remember how she's like, I'll show you how he ne- how he needs his foot, like his muscles moved. I, well, I'll show you how he needs no, to do no, no. this. So he rocks up in the morning and she goes, "You're late." Yep. And so I work for a big bank in a small branch, so they all know if I'm late. So you can't be late anymore. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right. And so she goes, "This is what he has. These are all the pills. Blah blah blah. This is his schedule." Yada yada yada. This is the exercise he needs when he goes to bed. I'll show you that later. Yeah. So when she gets home at the end of the day, she shows him, and then from that point on, he takes over completely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's like, all right, yeah, but you know, if yeah. if he needs that much looking after, wouldn't you prepare the guy a little bit more? But the thing is, you're not talking about a baby here. No, I Trevor know. Trevor is fully cognizant. You know, he's able I know, to but he's a jerk. communicate these things. But he's well, a jerk. You, know, you want to make sure this jerk is well looked after properly. Yeah, but I mean, like, you know, but he, I think that's where the, that little rapport comes in from with Paul Rudd and Trevor because, you know, I'm, I'm, when he is being I'm, a I'm jerk. Nitpicking. Through, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. nitpicking. I'm yeah. nitpicking. Only, only through a realistic sense of, of filters. But yeah, yeah. In, in a movie like this, I guess, who cares at the end of the day? We're there to see Paul Rudd and... Craig anyway. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's more about their relationship as well. I don't know. Like I still, I thought, because it's actually funny. I was going to say I found her at points overbearing because, you know, it's like, for example, she's cool. Yeah. Like I said, she's cool to leave him with, you know, this guy for a large period of time, yeah. you know, even, you know, staying back for happy hour and, you know, spending time with the kid then right. and all this stuff. Mm. But to then go, you know, totally oh, what is it like to do that but then to have a massive issue about it, going on a road trip yes i understand that but it's like well he already is there with him all the time so the only difference is, is that you're not close by yeah but i think it's also the fact that you know the security he's always been at home yes where the machines are she, the medicines are and they're close to the hospital yep you know but then i like what he said you know he goes oh i've booked it i've planned it all out i know every hospital along the way i know everything so he would like i mean which you can see that's great foresight on this person so you can tell he's the right man for the job yeah um you look and i mean i well though saying that though he did alleviate her stress very very quickly and then she did you know let them go i think i think what helped in that circumstance is the fact that when he brought the map over it wasn't a I'm gonna spin some shit to convince her. Yeah, it was already he planned. Already, he already thought about it. Yeah, mm-hmm. which is the only reason why he already mentioned it to Trevor in the first place. Yeah, exactly. So when when that came about, he's like, no, 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 no I've thought about it. Like, there's yeah. hospitals here, blah, blah blah. It will take two, three days to get there. Yeah. two, three days back. And then he also said as well, like I've already spoken to thing. They'll let us take the van, so we've he's, got the you know, transport. He, he's thoughtful. Yeah, 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 yeah. and. Consider enough to work things out before presenting them in the first place. Yeah, fair enough. So I think that concern of how quickly she sort of lets it go, I think it's because he clearly showed her. Yeah, show sure, okay, fair enough. Okay, mm-hmm. but what about Dot? Now, what do we think of Dot? I liked Dot. I have to say, out of like, I'm not a huge fan of Selena Gomez. Saying that, I haven't seen a lot that she's been in that hasn't been a Disney film. 
Mm. So it's you know I'm I can't really go hey let's judge let's compare yeah. flicks you know ones where she can't swear at all and has to have a really cutesy persona yeah. to one where she's you know swearing like a trucker it's a very big different you know there's a compare and contrast there I yeah. wonder if she found this movie very liberating oh, I'm sure I, look she's done other flicks since but I just haven't seen any of them unfortunately seen uh, interesting movie before this before thank you very much. <laughs> Words are good. Um, um, me personally, I've not seen her in anything aside from this movie. So I can't really comment on past, present or future until more stuff comes out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of what I saw, I thought she was fine. I thought she played the character fine. And like I said before, it's a character we've seen quite a lot in these sort of movies. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, what I liked is that she just... I don't know. She's the, the typical wild free spirit that I need to be at this place to better my life and blah, blah, blah. What I liked, though, is that her character didn't bring baggage. She was basically, she was there. I need a ride? Fine. You're going to give it to me? Great. You, well, she didn't bring baggage except for her dad. No, yeah. but. <laughs> well, and quite but, literally. Yeah, literally. But <laughs> at that point, it wasn't, for me, it wasn't baggage. Like he came along going, you know what, I, I just, I'm her dad. Yeah, we don't quite get along, but I can't in my right mind let her cross the country yeah. Yeah. without knowing that she's going to get there safely. And I don't think that's baggage. I think that he's just insecure. And in the end, she's like, oh, he's, he's kind of like a sad pup, puppy dog. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to help him out. But she didn't really bring any baggage. He just tagged along. Yeah, fair enough. And also, can I just mention that that plot was played by uh, Bobby Carnival. Uh, I can always say Carnival, even though I think it's Cannavale, but I, who cares? Yeah. Um, from uh, Boardwalk Empire and Vinyl, and he was also the stepdad in Ant Man with Paul Rudd. Yeah, so, right. Yeah. Um, who, yeah, very good actor. I did recognize him. I'm like, where have I seen him before? But yeah, yeah, exactly. But I, yeah, I, I see what you mean there because where she came along, it wasn't they didn't make the focus on her issues. Yeah. Either. And I actually really liked her rapport with Trevor, like the Dot and Trevor rapport. Like you can tell he was interested in it and you can tell he's there like fake it along going, yeah, he's a pussy. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And kind of <laughs> doing all that stuff to try and get into her good graces. Um, and oh, come on, that funny moment when he first when we first see her and she's having the smoke. Yeah. And he's like, and she's like, cool <laughs> shoes. And he's like, mole. Yeah. <laughs> and then that... Ma, 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 yeah, ma. The, the dialogue after in the van. Uh, that's great. He goes, I don't think I've ever seen anyone say less to a girl. <laughs> no, actually, you could just say ma. <laughs> what, I, what I actually loved is he really shines the moment he takes her out on the date. Yeah. And he's all dressed up. He's brought a flower. She's like, I told you I'm into assholes. And he goes, well, and he explains how he's breaking the curve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So technically I am an asshole. Right, a great explanation. I can't for the life of me repeat it because yeah. it's just too – it loops in on itself. It's one of those ones. Well, it's pretty straightforward. She, he just says, uh, I'm not an arsehole and by not being an arsehole, that makes me an arsehole because you want an arsehole. Yeah, and I'm breaking that. Yeah. Right. And yeah. that is what makes me an arsehole. Yeah, and doesn't she then go – it's like, it's strange in a strange. It, I understood it somehow. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's, it's weird, but yeah. I understood everything you just yeah, said. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and that that was his moment to shine. Like he he was he's you know he's stressed. He he's never been on a date before. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, and, but he's cool and calm enough to just let it out and be himself, and then go to dinner. And that was also a really great moment to see uh, like a Paul Rudd's character of Ben. Because, you know, even though they're just across the street, he's, that's that whole, you know, how much he cares for him because he stood there looking through the window the entire time to make sure he was okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was really sweet. Um, uh, it's. I was also wondering whether he was, was getting attached to him at that point, thinking of him as a father figure and yep. just making sure that kind of like, even though he's not my son and or anything like that, but have that kind of connection, kind of like a sense of pride, like helping seeing a kid, your kid, sort of mature to that point where he can go for a date and so yeah. forth. Mm. It made me wonder if, if in a character sense, that's what he was experiencing as well. I agree. And I think that's also, once again, going back to that point we were saying where every time you think something bad was going to happen, like, you know, if he's got that worry, you think, oh, something could happen, something, you know, as in something bad's going to happen to Trevor, he's going to have a collapse or he's, something's going to happen. Yeah. And it doesn't. And mm. I thought that, so that's another really good moment there because it doesn't happen. It just actually, like you said, it rounds the scene off in a really happy manner and it's really quite uplifting. And that's so, pretty cool. See, for me...
there are no actual bad people in this movie. There's no real genuine evil people or, or people that are just bad by nature or anything like that. Like, do you know what I mean? Do you, yeah. I, like, mean, I, found, okay. I found every person to be just nice and genuine doing their own thing, just living their own life, not in any way, shape or form out to harm anyone else purposely. Okay. Yeah. So, and by that sense of nature, like there was no threat ever in this movie. Mm. Mm. There was so the only threat was his own disease. Yeah, but I mean, even then, like we know, yes, he he could be potentially in danger. The fact that Paul Rudd's character does so well at looking after him mm. and has planned everything yeah. and has made sure that everything is going to be okay. Everything is okay. The only yeah, no, but I think there's there's there was an undercurrent of like the stakes. Uh, being uh, obvious all the way through it. Like that was the whole point of all these teasers. Oh, no, something bad happened. Something bad happened is because you automatically assume it's because of Trevor's disease. Yes. Like so the the enemy they were fighting definitely was his disease. It was always made very clear that that was the thing they were most afraid of happening is him succumbing to something and dying. See, at first I felt that. But yeah. at, at one point, like the the point at which I finally felt like, okay, nothing is going to happen yeah. was at the point where you think he's, there's been, you know, when Paul Rudd's character gets the phone call when they're at the pit. Yeah, yeah. And you think that something has happened to Trevor and when he gets to the bottom, you realise Peaches is pregnant and the baby's coming. Mm. At that point I realised, okay, nothing's going to happen. No, but that's mm. the whole point. That was the whole point of that scene. It was overcoming the enemy of the looming disease. Yeah. So and, and, and up until that point, they were always afraid and cautious and stuff. So that was the conclusion to that. Okay. The adversary uh, adversarial role that the disease took up to that point. Okay, fair enough. I'll let that one. So. Yeah, actually, and it's funny that you're saying that now because now I've obviously got this whole like, idea in my head is there's a lot of those little moments that they have to overcome because of his disease. Yeah. And yeah. now I'm thinking of that like on their road trip, like, for example, going to see the world's biggest bovine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that fucking sequence as well. Like the argument with the with the owner. Yeah, yeah. It's like we have it on the second floor. What, you don't have access? Yeah. You're the one who got into this business. Yeah. And then the fantastic <laughs> taking him up the stairs. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the guys <laughs> pull, lifting him up the stairs. Yeah. And they're all straining their backs, worried that they're going to drop his chair. Yeah, exactly. But I love that as well. And it's like, take as much time as you need. You good? You good? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so then the next sequence, pulling him back down again. Yeah. Oh, classic. All right. So I wanted to move towards the ending of this movie. Mm -hmm. Now, Heath and I had a brief discussion, and I've got a feeling you're on the same boat as this, but I have a different thought of opinion to Heath on the ending of this movie. Okay. Why don't you just get to your actual opinion? Okay. So at (laughs) the end of this movie, we are greeted. Okay. So Paul Rudd's character is a writer who, yeah. since the death of his son, clearly hasn't written anything. And through the road trip, he has found enough to write about uh, a particular topic, which is his actual road trip. So it's a, it becomes a biography of his time with Trevor. Yeah. Now, the way the movie ends is pretty much the last chapter, last lines of the book, mm-hmm. right, that he's currently writing. And so he writes in there that... No, he, he, he said that he'd finally found rest. He yes. finally found rest. Yep. And then the joke is thrown in that he was lying, of course. Yep. Yeah. And she like, resigned. Got, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So I wanted to ask what your thoughts of the ending was, what your thoughts of the ending was, and I will then give you what I think. Okay. Well, okay, so basically I thought that was a really good round-off because, you know, as we know, they were kept on doing these jokes, you know, where he was faking being dead or faking, you know, with the pills or anything like that. So it was that repartee. And so to me, that's exactly what happened. Right. He's telling the story of he's became, he became he's stayed friends with this guy, with Trevor, mm-hmm. and then going to see him, you can see, oh, God, he's pulled a, another trick on someone. He's just upped the ante. Of right. It. So I, I feel it's just a joke. Okay. Okay. Dan? Um... Well, yeah, I'd agree with you, and I'd say it's because 
the whole point of this movie was sub- subverting the the normal sort of um, uh, trajectory of a movie like this. You know, it's it's meant to be. They're meant to come to some sort of uh, conclusion, and then you know the epilogue is uh, he died shortly afterwards. So the fact that he didn't was subverting the norm there, and that was what this movie uh, had done from the beginning. You know, it was teasing the fact that Trevor was meant to die all the way through, but he never actually did. Mm. That was the underlying sort of. I guess it's an anti tension. In that, anyway. Right. Okay. So, for me, I felt completely different. I felt that he actually died. Okay. And so, he's writing the accounts of what had happened. It's a biography, right? So, he's written exactly what has happened. And the way the story ends is too much on a sad note. So, for his book, I felt that he ends up writing in that he faked it just so he would feel better. Okay. So here's the question though. Why do you think that he just added in so he would feel better? Because like that, what there's what, okay. Yes. He had the long pause. We've got yep. the long pause. He's pressed enter and then yep. he pressed, and then he does the last line where he says he was faking it. Mm-hmm. Generally as well, then you would also have like a shot where maybe he's got a tear or something like that, where he looks sad Paul Rudd didn't look sad. Like Ben didn't look sad. He actually more looked like he was happy that it was like with that. No, if you if you look carefully, he is actually upset. And when he writes the last line in, he begins to smile because throughout the experience of the movie, what we have come to know with Trevor is that he's a jokester. Yeah. yeah. And for me, I felt that by writing that line in, he keeps his memory alive of being the trickster. I'm gonna have to rewatch that ending a little bit, but I That's the yeah. way that's the way I saw it, the way I interpreted it. For me, it was that Trevor had that one experience that was really good, and unfortunately he did die. But to keep the memory going on, he writes that line in so that it feels more natural to what Trevor was. Okay. Okay. That's well, I just, mean, that's I just don't the way buy I... it at all. But with an ending like that, it's open to interpretation. You, and that's what I was actually going to say. Take your own and bring your own interpretations to the table. Yeah, it's definitely got that. Oh, it's oh, it, oh, well, that's what I was going about to. Oh, there. Oh yeah, that was good. I really yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the best point you made all night. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you, Dan. Thanks. As in, <laughs> I agree. <with> you. <laughs> <laughs> that's all you had to say. <laughs> I'd like to see you edit that one. <laughs> Yeah, it'll be fine. <laughs> exactly right. We'll just edit Heath out. <laughs> just a black bar. No, nah, we'll, we'll stick a photo over the top of you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> photo of a diseased appendix. <laughs> right. Yes. You are going to do that, right? Sure. <laughs> just at that one moment. Awesome. Fantastic. Mm. All right. Where are we going? All right. So in saying that, I think we're done with this one and I think it's time to wrap so, me personally, I'll go first. Uh, I th- I love this movie from beginning to end. I didn't really find any issues with it whatsoever. I laughed so many times throughout this movie. And it's been a long time since a movie has actually made me do that. Um, I'm going to give this four and a half bananas. Mm, okay. Ooh, wow. That's big. Um, That's what she said. Damn right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wah, wah, wah. I was going to say, hey, does your penis work? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> no, remember Thanks. when when Dot says that in the oh, she right. goes and so, uh, Paul tries to change the topic and then and the, no because she says does that something something and does your or and or does your penis work or something like that? Yeah. It's to do with uh, the waffles. Are the waffles good? Yeah, that's right. Is that the waffles or your penis? No, no, no. The waffles are bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she asks about the penis. Uh, Rudd tries to change the subject by I'm um, talking about the waffles. waffles. That's right. All right, Heath. What do you think? Okay, so look, I I agree. I think this movie was. Good. I lo- like it's a great movie, actually, I should say. It's really w- it's definitely worth seeing. Um, I think it's great that, like you were saying, Dan, instead of you know going the down the road of he's you know, he has this disease, he's going to die, that instead they subvert that yep. and go the opposite direction. And I think they'd make a lot of jokes that go along with that as well, like the fake joking uh, ch- fake joking, the fake choking. Yep. Um, but also the other jokes about like his penis and things like that. Like yeah, I think yeah. they kind of they're taking the disease almost uh, using the disease as a joking point, but mm. not making fun of it and not yeah. making fun of him, but going along with the joke. Uh, look, I did. I still think it was a little bit so in some points. So I'm going to give it three and a half. 
three and a half. Three and a half bananas. There you go. Um, all right. Well, yeah, I thought it was a fun little movie. Um, you know, Paul Rudd was great, and so was uh, Craig Roberts as Trevor. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't really have that much to say. It was just a nice little movie, you know? Like, yeah, the the whole idea that they were – they wanted to make like an anti-tragedy movie, yeah. you know, in the way that, yeah, well, well, I don't believe he died at the end. I don't um, believe he did either. Well, it was neat. Yeah, yeah. So uh, overall, I would probably say four star, uh, bananas. Ooh. No four stars. star bananas. No stars. Four star bananas. bananas. Yeah. It's when Mario and Donkey Kong no, got even together. <laughs> what, what, what? Anyway, <laughs> I can't remember the sound he makes. That was Pac Man. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> waka waka. <laughs> uh, anywho. All right. So we are the Theta Grillers. You can catch us in a fortnight with the next review. If you want to find out what this week's movie, Who Am I, is, stay tuned for the end of the theme song to find out what it is. On that note. Uh, one last thing. Yes. So you guys probably would have seen last week. We put up our, our first uh, video game based uh, video. Ah, yes, yes, that's right. Um, so, yeah, me and Heath sat down and had a look at the uh, closed alpha of Lawbreakers, the new uh, game by Cliff Bozinski. So if you like that... Um, I don't know, what do the kids say? Give it a thumbs up, subscribe, all that shit. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. Thumbs up, subscribe. Whatever yeah. it is that makes it that you like it and it becomes good. Yeah. 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 Basically, yeah, just, just that, give us lots of views. Is that um, trolling? We'll, is that what they say? No. No, no, we don't want that to happen. No. No. Just just don't get that 4chan kid involved. 4chan? Yeah, he's a hacker. Okay, I will we, not 4chan. We, we need the uh, Star Wars kid. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, so uh, back to, to Sanity. Yeah, so if you like that, let us know. And uh, yeah, we, yeah, we'll probably sure. look at doing some more stuff like that in the future. Absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm actually planning to get uh, Telltale's uh, Batman uh, yes, in there very well. soon. Yep. So I'm uh, going to sit down uh, probably with Heath and discuss what uh, we think of it. So probably keep an eye out for that next week. Yes. Yeah. We are trying to make it regular. We can't promise anything just yet. But we will try and bring these out on a regular basis. Next week. Basis. Just just tune in next week. Yeah, That's we'll all you need to know. <laughs> tune in in a week. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. Anywho. All right, guys. See you next uh, fortnight. Yeah. <laughs> Best sign off ever. See you. See you sometime. All right, so you've stayed to find out what this week's movie, Who Am I, is. And the answer is The Faculty. Yes. From 1998, starring, holy shit. I forgot, everybody. I forgot how many people were in this movie. I but know. there is, uh, okay, so I got, I'm looking at Selma Hayek. Ro- uh, uh, you got um, uh, Patrick Roberts. Robert Patrick. Robert uh, Patrick. <laughs> your boyfriend. <laughs> no, that's Patrick Wilson. Uh, Patrick Usher. Wilson. Jesus. Yeah, Usher was in this. Yeah. Jordana Brewster. Yeah, Elijah Wood. Yep. Josh Harnett. Fucking hell, so many people. So many people. And also directed by Robert Rodriguez. Oh, yeah. Yeah, don't know if he wrote it, but yeah, fucking amazing movie. Uh, really? Yeah. It really wasn't that good. Dude, I rewatched it recently. It's awesome. Yeah, okay. You're on drugs. Well, I wasn't con- considering, the considering the age, <laughs> considering the age of the movie, I I, th- I remember it being kind of one of those sort of like early teenage sort of horror movies. Yeah, it was just in the, the same vein. Yeah, sc- scream and all that. Yeah, and the CGI was horrible. But it like, wasn't so it was more, bad. It was like a new version of Invasion of the Body Snatchers or Children of the Corn kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So it was oh, in that same ilk of horror movies. Yeah, it came yeah, out at no. the same time when all those horror films came out. And the CGI was horrible. It was yeah, terrible. it was. I'm not so going to lie. It you was can't, bad. You, there's no redeeming the CGI that was used. But I still liked it. Heath. I love it. I think it's great. I, think I give that drugs. four bananas. Four bananas? Yeah. You're ruining. <laughs> I got a feeling it's actually more like a one or two tank girls, but. Yeah. No, trust me. Rewatch that movie. It's awesome. All right, I will rewatch it and I'll let you know what I think. Done. But All to right. the viewers at home, don't waste your time. Go see something decent <laughs> instead. Yeah, like Fundamentals of Caring. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I hear that was a good flick. Uh, yeah. Oh, I thought so. All right, guys. See you in a fortnight. Bye. Catch ya. See ya. This podcast is recorded and produced by Theatre Gorillas, edited by Dan Clark. <laughs> now nah, I'm ready. Okie dokie. Just rubbing my nose on camera.
good. It's a good look. You know, if you're going to do that right before we start filming, it's going in. <laughs> <laughs> good. <laughs> um, all right. <clears throat> <laughs> you good? Right now? Yep. All oh, right. good. <laughs>